have something in my hands. Can we call it a chat key? Okay, don't say no. That would be the baby. Okay, let's call this one. Maybe he can recognize this key. Can we call it a chat key? Yeah, maybe yes, and maybe not. Usually when I come and I open the door, main door with this one, I shut the door with this one. Maybe we can call it. But then depends how we see. Definitely sure that it is not a church key. It opens something, we call it a key. It's definitely not a church key. I have a bunch of key and one of this I open the church building. But maybe this is a church key in one way and it is not in another way. This morning we will try to find out some of the important key points what makes a church a successful one. And the key for success. <coughs> and I put 11 different points, although we have many points to ponder what key can be used to make a church a successful one. Fortunately, we have some answers in the Bible where we can find. If you go around in different places, both within our church and outside so-called different denominational churches, if you look into some survey, we can find few things. Some churches have definite problem of a parking lot. One of those is my neighboring church. Some days we go during this uh, Easter days, there is no place for parking. They try to park everywhere. And some Sundays, I don't know what kind of special Sundays they do have, they have the problem of parking. And there are some places, they have a lot of places and they have no cars filling in. But one thing I saw soon after September 11, all the church parking lots were filled and some people were asking the neighbors if they can park their car in their yard or some areas there. And some churches are very successful, growing very rapidly with the number of members and some are not. And some churches are running around with the kids and full of uh, future. And some never with anything, something all with real, real old ones. Some are filled with noise. Some are filled with silence, just like a funeral silence. Some churches have more expenses with the activities, monetary part. Some churches, nothing goes out. And some churches even do not have to spend because they do not have it. Some churches have the churches growing fast, full of missionary activities. Some have, as they call, I hope the brethren won't mind using the term, every Sabbath afternoon and Sunday morning, Yugoslavian work. And some are full of activities. Some are working horizontal. Some do vertical. And some churches are so small, so cordial, and they know each other so very well by name. And every individual in the family, even where goes who, where and when. And some churches go that far that they don't even know the name of the deacons or elders. Even their church members, even sometimes their Sabbath school members. Some are filled with the tithes and offerings. Some are just one with the, filled with the tippers. Some churches are doing so much of evangelism and baptizing, and they just grow. And some churches are simply fossilizing. And we both had some experience, some churches we saw only grand old people, we don't see any future at all. We said if that continues, 
and just a simple calculation, arithmetic calculation, and few years would go, only fossils remained. And it should be a growing church. It should be a wonderful church with every generation. There should be no generation gap. If there is a generation gap in the church, we could see somewhere between we could lose the growth. So there should be connectivity chronologically, age-wise, generation-wise. And there is another problem that we see also sometimes. Some churches are so liberal, they just let it go. We live anyhow. We can do any way. Another church is so rigid. Obey the law to the letter. Sometimes make something more than what is required. And maybe sometimes we call them. So one group is called liberals, another group is fanatics. And each one tries to tell one name or another name. Thank God that some churches have a very balanced one. And God wants somewhere that has to be read. And it should be having a kind of balanced way as the proverb says that, do not swear to the right, nor to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Set your eyes so straight ahead. Interestingly, I was just reading through one of the books, which is titled the Universal Almanac. It's a, it's a little bit old book, it's a 1990 edition. In the page 226, it's talking about the health and medicine and accident. I had a very interesting in the quote that I found. It says that every 10 minutes here in America, almost 200 people become disabled by accident. It's not talking about an accident on the road. Every 10 minutes, 200 people right in America in 1990, today maybe more, meet with an accident and become disabled just in their own home. I say that right at home is more accidents just by tripping over the steps, maybe climbing on the ladder, or maybe one way or another, they have some kind of accident just right on their home. No vehicles involved, no other third party involved. Sometimes most of the accidents are just because of their balancing. Many tipped off when they try to take shower and come out of the bathtub, they slip off. And many lose their balance when they come out of their bed, just try to stand on their foot, they lose their balance. And most of the accident because of their balancing. If you lose your balance, you fall on the ground, and it affects your posture, and it affects your health. Just imagine every 10 minutes, 200 minutes, it will be how many by 60 minutes. And in one day is a great number of accidents. So balance is a critical. A balanced spiritual life is super critical. We have to maintain a very balanced life. If you sway from one side and another side, we can lose a very, very important essence of your life. Just notice something important where we read in Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. Matthew 24, verse 24, the words of Jesus. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall so great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Here I just pick only this word in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. This particular word tells us that there are four important 
uh, matter of fact, is a five important problem. Five warnings talks about the false Christians, false prophet, great signs, great miracles, and deception. And coming to some important people, even the very elect one. This thought is amplified in Selected Message Book 2, verse 16. Selected Message to page 16. There it says, notice here, fanaticism will appear in the very midst of us. Deception will come and be of such a character that if it were possible, they would mislead the very elect. Could you notice here something so important? What would drift the very elect away from their solid ground is something ghost hammering possibly. This is almost a word by word is what is written in Matthew 24, 24. I'm not going to talk only on this. We will try to find the other side also. There is another group who says that this takes the church into the other side, complete liberal side. Love or pleasure, anything, imitate that whatever comes outside. It's just a taking possible note. Okay, that's fascinating. Let's take up. Oh, we must grow with the time. Good. We take with the time and go adapt something that is outside. There is also another one, volume one, selected message, page 221. It takes another point the same way. I was instructed that fanaticism would come again among us in the closing day of the message. Not only liberalism comes, and the people come and take over, uh, they are carried away by the lovers of the pleasures, and they also go with, with, the, with the enthusiasm to keep what they think that is good, is to an other extreme also. So this is one of the key points that we have to consider, that that should not carry us away from what we could stand. Many of us have traveled by big airplanes, especially the big one, the Megatop 747. It's so huge. Just to look from outside when it is landing or taking off, sometimes even we adults wonder how they could land so specific right on the dot. They go so much to that effect, they do not sway. If one little bit of imbalancing can sway the big airplane, go out of the runway, can kill hundreds of people right there. But they're so careful, they could go so much landing carefully, take off carefully. One point they could take care of it is, they just balance the moving of this aircraft right on the line, neither to the left, nor to the right. Then they could make a perfect takeoff and perfect landing. And if that could go off anyway, and that could be disastrous. And I just know one incident right here within this country. I knew one person who became so enthusiastic soon after the person became Christian. Soon after became accepted our message. So nice, so full of energy, first love, and everything was so enthusiastic. And the first thing she did was reading entire spirit of prophecy, nine volumes of the testimonies, and much more she did. And then she was able to teach right in the church and outside the church and educate everyone possibly. That was so good. Much more was she was trying to evangelize in many ways that, that she found with all the magazines, so-called health magazines, and so-called natural bills and a dietary sub substitute or what they call as, a, what do they call? <laughs> Nutrition supplements. 
and all those things. She was, one day I was there soon after the meal, she was giving about seven different capsules. I asked, what is this one? I'm, not, I'm okay. She was telling me that, brother, this is this one, this is this one, this was giving me. She was giving me all kind of nutrition study that if you take this so much of uh, um, MD, you need so much and so much and so much, so much. She was giving all kinds of, you must take. You are a minister, you need to be well fit. I said, okay, you give me today and tomorrow who is going to give? She said, I'm going to give you so many bottles for you today and you must buy. She gave me a catalog in my hand and you must buy. I said, everything she said must and must and must. I said, okay. That was so strange with the full of love and enthusiasm she hand over in my hand, all these things. And in her table, in the kitchen the counter was all kind of little bottles on all kind of catalogs, where to buy, how to buy this natural bills. Have you ever seen a tree full of bills hanging outside in a garden? At least in my garden, I don't grow the bills. And some people call the natural bills. Please forgive me, this is something happening sometimes. And this is too much. And there are some people going so much the very high health conscience. There are three principal ways way you can maintain your health. One is forget the health, eat all that you want, don't do exercise, eat and drink whatever you want. Principle number one, and you can die soon. Principle number two, you can also have a kind of healthful condition. Be very careful with your health condition. Measure with every measuring quantity. So much of vitamin C, so much of uh, carbohydrate, so much of fat and protein, and all this measure so excellent. Make yourself a laboratory, a perfect laboratory, something you put in. And that's one way of doing it. And you can also grow some natural build tree at your garden. And you can also distill your water and drink so much as needed and dehydrated and you can also make yourself in another kind of factory or experimental life for the as a cannabis and there could be another one eat moderate of the best food and totally abstain from anything that is harmful do a proper exercise not any exercise some people do exercise the way they define that exercise, and they waste their time, waste their money, and waste also their health, then they have to go for the rehabilitation. And that's also there, the over-exercise. And some people also, they bring the, the, the hydrotherapy in a way that internal intaking of three gallons a day, wash and wash and wash, and so much that that's too much. We have to drink water, but not so much to drink three gallons. I know somebody who drank more than one gallon, and one gallon and a half and still felt silk. That's too much. You need enough. That which is good, judicially used, and that which is needed, so much is needed, is not as much as you want, and just put yourself in a great danger. And there was also, I know somebody who used a kind of distill the water, not sufficient to buy the water, but to boil it, distill it, and drink, chip by chip, and very little, and dehydrated and die. And this could be also dangerous. And the person who I told you, that one who was teaching me must and must and must, finally what happened? She had a problem with her family, and she has to finally leave herself, the church, for the reasons he gave. Well, it's enough is enough. Too much in the church. I asked, what is in the church too much? Too much of sin in the church. She left. This we can call fanaticism. That's dangerous key. Fanatic. So fanatical we use as dangerous liberal. We cannot be liberal and neither we could be fanatical. And that will be more dangerous. We should be more balanced. Thank God that we have a balanced way. The Bible gives that we have to live a life neither to left nor to sway to the right. And Bible should be our road map. Christ should be our guide. And he should be our driving line right on the middle line we drive. Then we can have a wonderful way to go on.
and if you go one way or other, that would be a dangerous. And we remember that story of Joshua in chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, when God had just given the law to the people. He says that, be strong, very courageous, be careful to obey all the law. And he says that further, we should to keep in a right way, not to the left, not to the right. Then he says that I will prosper, then you will be prosperous and successful. And this is one of the key to success. Not to sway to the left, not sway to the right. I want you to open with me one more key text. We will ponder there a little bit. Book of Acts, chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2. Can I request Sister Barbara to help us with this reading of 42, verse 42 and 43? And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Can I ask Sister Anita to read 44, 44 and 45? <coughs> Acts chapter 2, 44 and 45. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man could need. But Chuck, you have this book opened? And would you read 46 and 47, please? And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and, sing and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Thank you very much. Here we find another 10 different keys of a successful church. Let's read verse 42. He said, And they continued steadfastly. In the apostles' doctrine. They continued in the teaching. They devoted themselves in the apostles' teaching. They were faithful and true to what they had been taught, to every truth and every doctrine. They did not bring in anything from elsewhere. Many times today what we find is itching ear where something fascinating, new theological ideas, new thoughts. And that's the fascinating words and phrases are put in in many places. It could affect our church even. As the computer is affected by virus, every day it is estimated 3,000 virus, new viruses coming up. And also in the health-wise, every day, many days, and I get a warning from him, Brother um, Zeke, that to be wary, we got some virus, virus warning. And sometimes some news clipping from the, the state, warning us there are some virus. Sometimes from Microsoft, warning us that there are some virus. And so much is the new software that developed to uh, maybe counteract the virus. And the virus comes and comes and comes. It affects as much as even the general conference computers, right? At one time, all the computers were affected with so much of virus. And everyone was panicked. And everyone started warning each other, don't open this file. We know why. And there was virus. And so much, we had a firewall. And everyone had installed with all kind of installation with to protect any viral infection. But the virus find its own way. And we should safeguard against all these things. They devoted themselves to the teaching of apostles. They were faithful and true to what they had been taught. 
and they did not want to get anything from outside. That was one of those key for their success. And we should not have the itching ear. And then another warning that could become today is in some places, thank God it has not affected our church yet. Sometime the pulpit has become a social preaching center. The Christ is not taught. And sometimes it just go in a different way. And if that could come to us, that's going to be dangerous. If this virus will affect our church, I think we should save God against all these things. This will drift us away from the success. And the second key is here. And they fellowshiped. They not only devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, but they also devoted themselves in fellowship. In many places, there is kind of a, a movement going on. And not well, the last week, I think two weeks ago, when we were in Eastern Europe, we heard some news that there was a kind of a movement going on in Siberia. Many people had some problem because of their principle, because of the truth they were put out of a church. And many people visited from our church and other churches, also some independent movements also went there. And somebody told, no, you don't worry, you don't have to be in a church. You are responsible only to Christ. And some people have put, okay, you take a position that you don't have to be responsible to church. And you have worship at your home. There's some kind of new virus in some places. It's a world virus, but takes a new form in any places. And they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and also continued fellowshipping the breaking of bread. They associated together. And this is the one thing it's needed, brethren. The more closer we come to one another, then we come more closer to Christ. This is the 11th commandment, that we must love one another. John 13, 34 and 35. By this the people would know that we are his disciples. Association together, meeting together, loving and sharing together is one of another key of success in every church. And this is what, what is needed today. There was one analysis given why more people go to bar to drink. Is it just because there is something intoxicating, something so fascinating? The research says that no. It is just because they share their fellowship, they meet. It's not because of the other one. They don't have a doctrine. They don't have something to attract them. But just because a rich and poor can meet together, they can call the name if Bill Gates is there by his name. There's no problem. The one, just a street walker, maybe a painter, maybe a gardener, with a rich man can sit there and share. They say that that's a kind of fellowship that they have. They, that's what makes them to draw there. And that was something so interesting. I said, that could be one of the points true. Once they are gone for that, then they are there for the addiction. Then they die in debt. So my brethren, what comes to that? There is another research is told that the people who never attend a church, no, there is an, let me put it in another way. The people who are, who are member, the, who are affiliated to some clubs, who has some kind of social organization, social activities, and who meet together periodically live longer, one fifth of the time, more than others who are not associated or affiliated with any other community. It's like this. This is what some of the people, even they are not associated with any of those religious organizations, even they live longer because they are having a kind of association with their group. And now what we need to have is we should to meet together, fellowship together, associate together, share together, and love together. That's the next key for a success in a church. Many times we talk only about one or two keys, and we should have a combination of all these keys. Then the church can flourish. Then let's read also, the third point is that not only they continued in the doctrine, not only they fellowshiped and break bread, and they continued in praise. The prayer life is so much important. 
Many times the prayer life today become a mechanical life. There's one more thing today. I read to, not uh, too long ago in Times Magazine, America has a fashion today The Hollywood becomes a vegetarian today. And so also the praying became a fashion today, a prayer band, prayer group, and kind of, okay, well, I'm going for a prayer. Some of the universities became now having a kind of prayer band, just became a fashion. They enroll themselves in the prayer band, prayer tower, prayer group, prayer room, prayer chat. It's not that way. It should be a kind of sincere, open heart to prayer is needed. It's not a mechanical, organized, formula prayer. We don't have to have a formula how to pray and ask God in the simplest way. How would you ask with dad if he need a little bit of juice? Dad, I need juice. You do not write a formal petition and come with application to give to dad. I need dad hereby. I informed you to supply me a bottle of juice because I thirst and I feel like drinking and I need a little bit of juice. And I further request you that the juice be of this brand and further I resolve to request you to ask that they should be from Sam's Club because I, my mother has a membership in Sam's Club. Well, that's a kind of formal prayer. We don't need to have it. And many times we have a prayer in the church. Every time you listen, the prayer comes with the same notes of words, an organized word of prayer. And this should not be the way. This should be the way that the prayer comes, that many times the same terms and terminologies. And this is a mechanical prayer. I don't think that we should have the prayer of mechanical, a prayer life, a personal connection with Christ, and a prayer for us and for others, and most of the things that we have to ask for others too. Let's go quickly to the next point. And not only they continued in prayer, and they continued with the doctrine, and not only they continued with the fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer, and there is one thing that came, verse 43, say that, Everybody was filled with the fear. The fear came upon them. Fear God and give Him glory. It's not, they were not afraid. They kind of respect. They know what they feared. And this is needed today. Sometimes we find, you know, especially if you happen to travel in India, even in the bus, some people, the Hindus, when they're in the bus, when they happen to pass across a temple or maybe in a church, they reverently they just show their signs of their respect. And that's the kind of fear they continue, the kind of respect they have developed because of their culture. Even some other religion, they do. They can fear a positive fear, not a fright, not a terrifying. And they were able to do a wonderful thing. Here I just remember one story which was told. A lady was attending the church very regularly and she was full of fear. They thought that she was taught that she was from a different, denom different church uh, denomination. And she came to church all the time with the fear and she was not happy. Every time she was terrified. If I do this one, I would be strike this way. If I do this one, you will have this one. And all kind of equation. If you do this, you will have this. And finally, somebody said that, you know, I have prayer life, I have everything, all that, but I'm not happy. The pastor said that, okay, how do you pray? She told all those things, how she prayed. And the pastor told, don't pray for one week and see the difference. He said, don't pray for one week? That's a strange thing. Well, just don't pray for one week, see what happens. And she stopped praying for one week. He said, oh, she was told that if we don't do this, then she will be killed. Now, that was not happened. Then now, the pastor says that what happened? Nothing happened. Now you pray with love and continue what had happened. She, cried, she tried, she prayed with love, spontaneous, without uh, terrorist uh, impact on her mind. She allowed to pray. Her life would change. She had a wonderful experience. The prayer life should be a spontaneous prayer with a need, with love, not with a terrifying thing. But here, this fear, what we say is that fear of Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom. To learn to love, learn to do. Then came every soul, the fear came upon every soul, 
and many wonders and signs were done by this apostle. The next key was, after they had a prayer life, after they know how to fear God, and they demonstrated something, many wonders and miracles and signs were done by the apostles, and the people witnessed in their life a change. When they saw the boldness of the disciple, what they did, they marveled. Why they marvel? Because they learned that they were unlearned, but they were with Jesus. Something they could tell that they were with Jesus. Can they say that we, were, we are with Jesus? The wonders they did was the life and reflection that they could. The first church produced fruit. They were busy for God. They went out and helped people. And the miracles followed. Can we have the same experience today? They lived a life of a service for others. What is our life today? Can we give a witnessing life? A testimony can be on us. A powerful sermon can be a living life of Christ. And the next key is in verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. And all believers were together and they had everything in common. Well, they had one step further than that we had, where what we could do today. And they had everything in common. They, even the property they sold, they could try to be together. That's a different story. But um, what we could do is that even the, if we can have a one way to understand even the common belief, common doctrine, common practicing, could be wonderful. And the unity is one of the ingredients that is required to make the church a successful one. If you are united in Christ, united one another, that will be another interesting thing. Every Sabbath we come, whenever I spend the Sabbath here, either Sister Lisa or Sister Anita give us something after the lunch. They come around and the little girl comes around and gives us all a kind of kolachi or maybe a cookie. When you make the cookies, you have at least several increments, right? Two, three, four, five, sometimes more. Yesterday, my little daughter was preparing food and she had a lot list of uh, increments. She had some, she went to buy some. Now, if you miss one of these increments, well, this doesn't turn out to be the good way that you expected. Then after you give it to a husband to taste something, he says that he raises his eyes, he says, something is lacking. And after he eats, he says, look, I don't know what, it's something is short. He immediately notice if you forget to put something, he notice a different. Is it correct, sister? And one ingredient makes the taste differ. So here, it's just like the cookies need so much of ingredients. The growth of the church needs all the ingredients. So we need every kind of people. Some apostles, some teachers, some preachers, some helping, some missionaries, some young people, some old people. We need all kind. Some little children also. Then we will have a wonderful essence. This goes, the church is a successful one. And we are part of this vital ingredient of the growth of the church. We need you. We need the unity in the church. We need a positive growth in the church. I praise God that we have that ingredient in our church. Let's continue having that, continue growing. That's a wonderful thing. And just continuing within 44 again. They have... Uh, furthermore, that they had one more thing is that they had unselfish generosity. They not only had everything in common, they had something to give, something in common, an open heart, open packet. And that's needed today, give. Jesus gave his life. And we at least have something to give. We can just uh, preach only on that a long sermon. But one of time, we should be having a mind of generosity. And selfish generosity is needed.
Then the faith point of this key is, and everyone continued to meet together in the temple court. 46. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking the bread and house to house that ate their meat. That's true. It was a big church, over 3,000 members, and they continued meeting every day. And how often we do, we should have more activities. Sometimes it's hard to call for some meetings, and we should have more meetings, more programs, more activities. And then recently, one young person sent me a kind of, uh, some, sometimes they send me illustrations. Some young people send me mail with an illustration. Let me share this illustration with you. Three pastors met together for a posthum one day. They had discussed discuss about one common problem all of them had. I don't know how this common problem happened to be in their church. Each pastors were trying to tell what is their problem was. Their church was infected with beds. And then they discussed how to control, you know, the, this kind of the, uh, the flying animal comes in. It's a kind of animal between bird and um, a bat. It's a kind of animal uh, between the birds and uh, the mammal, right, the bat. And now what went wrong with this was each pastor had the same problem in the church. Then said, how did you control that? He said, I read exactly as this young person told. One person, I got so mad, I took a shotgun and fired them. Okay, a pastor took a fire gun and shot. Then what next? It only made more holes so to admit more beds. Okay. The second pastor said, I had a different strategy. I trapped them alive. And it's continued. Then I drove over 50 miles before releasing them. But what happened was bad. The beds beat me and came back to church before I reached the church. Because they fly, aerial distance is shorter than the driving distance. Well, the third pastor said that it was so simple. I haven't had this problem, none of this above. <coughs> then what did he do? And though both pastors are amazed, he said, simply I baptized them. I haven't, then, I haven't seen them ever since I baptized them. <laughs> the simple, sometimes it happens that he baptized them, they're gone. Sometimes when the people were baptized, they're so enthusiastic, they do everything, and after some time they could win. We just like the, the seeds fallen on the rock. It should not be the way. They should continue. Sometimes the problem comes. Just one more illustration to conclude with and the last point to conclude. Have you ever seen... Well, I used to be a sportsman, so I don't want to give this illustration, but it, sometimes it gives a, a logical application to the church, so I give you. Have you ever seen a sportsman or sports lover saying this complaint. I just put some 11 complaint here. Just imagine. He says, I'm not going to watch this sports anymore because of this. I don't go to play or I do not go to watch. Because every time I went, they ask for money. I don't go or I don't play because I sat next to one who is not so friendly, so I am not going back. The seats were too hard and not so comfortable at all. Some of the complaints those who make. The coach never come to me or to my house and to have a visit. Or the captain never comes to me to visit. And the referee makes a decision that I cannot agree with. So I'm not going back. 
So you can compare this with the church order. The game sometimes went so much, it went over time. Even it took half of my meal time. I go home late, I cannot stand that. So I cannot go to this sports anymore. And the music that was played there was not according to my likeness, so I don't go there. And sometimes, all the time, they schedule the sports and the games. When I'm so busy, when I have to write my exam, they schedule the sports. When I have to do some point with my friends, and they do it, so I don't go. Even the dress they wear is not according to my taste, and I don't go. And sometimes I suspect that I was sitting next to some hypocrite. They just come because they want to find somewhere between where they can talk something and participate and tell something different from what they are. And is it all this kind of problem sometimes? And this would not be. If they, the worldly people with all this problem, would not mind, we should not. At one time, Brother Balbuk told one, there is room for one more. And somebody refused to go to church. He asked, why you are not there? He said, it's simple because the church is full of hypocrites. Oh, don't worry. There is room for one more. And we need to grow up. And just, just last point in this. Finally, they, what did it? They praised God. And final point, they had favor with all the people. They, thank, they were so thankful and they lived a wonderful life. And because of this, they were respected. They had the favor they could enjoy. So these 11 points are the difficult points to break. If you could take these keys and notice what are the problems, if you can unlock those, if you can lock those things, unlock the key to success. The failure of a church is the unbroken book, which is the Bible, uninvited friend, Unbend knee, unimpressed soul, unused witness, unbroken heart, the ungiving gifts, unattended peers, unhappy members, unrespected members, unbalanced life or imbalanced life. These are the things makes failure. If you can put them behind and lock it, then you have the success. When you come to church, end expectantly, greet others cordially, kneel prayerfully, study diligently, worship reverently, give generously, Listen attentively, live thoughtfully, share truthfully, and come back regularly and live balancedly. This will make a church, a successful church, our life, a wonderful Christian life. May God help us that we may have a balanced life. Then we would have the same experience, praising God, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, churches should be saved. That was a wonderful experience. When they had all this ingredient, then the Lord did his work. There were souls added. May God help us that we would have the same experience. This little church, the Roanoke Church, would be a wonderful witnessing experience for others. This is my prayer for this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Our Father which art in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful morning, brightness of the day, 
We thank you for the gift of life. We also for the beautiful lessons that we had this morning. We also thank you for the opportunity to assemble here in the capacity of their children. We thank you for the traveling message that were given to their children from different parts to be here. We thank you for their lessons. And we pray that thou would continue helping us that we would have all the keys and all the ingredients of a successful life in our Christian family here. May our church have the growing experience, the loving experience, and the living and witnessing experience. May each one of us have a powerful sermon to preach. Pray the Heavenly Father, thou would help us to reach the unreached. Tell a friend that Jesus loves him too. Bring a friend here that he can share the love that we experience here. We pray that would continue helping us that we will have a giving experience, a sharing experience. Help us, Heavenly Father, that we will have a balanced life, not to sway to the left, not to the right, but having Christ as our pattern, we can go and uh, looking into Jesus, who is author and the finisher of our faith. Bless our young people here and the little children. We also pray thou to bless the senior ones. May their experience be a blessing for each one of us. Continue helping us today and the days to come. Accept a prayer of supplication. Bless the servants who are in the seminars that would help them in their learning there. May they have a fruitful experience. Accept a prayer and our supplication. Forgive our sins and shortcomings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.